Hi, welcome back to The Wandering Wesleyan. This is Chaplain Greg, and we are continuing in our Walking in the Word series. And you can see I've changed locations. I'm actually in my pastor's uh, office. He is away on sabbatical. Pastor Brandon's on, away, on sabbatical. So uh, I've taken over his office for a little bit um, to do our videos. Uh, if you like what you're watching, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the like button. Uh, on YouTube that uh, helps more people see this content and um, feel free to share feel free to share and to discuss in the comments anything that you hear here uh, while I'm teaching um, I'm glad you're with me today so we're gonna pick up where we left off last week and that is with Saul we're in this we're in the Samuel scroll and Samuel is the last judge and first and second Samuel in our Bibles was really one big scroll and uh, we're at a point where Israel has asked for a king, and Samuel's not too sure about this. Uh, he thinks it's a really bad idea. So he goes to, to God and asks God, what should I do? And God says, go ahead, give him a king. This is what they want, give it to him. And so God anoints a man by the name of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin, to be the king. Now, huh, Benjamin. We haven't heard about Benjamin. Let's go through our line here. We start with Adam, to Seth, to Noah, to Shem. After Shem, we have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whose name is later changed to Israel. And from, and from Israel, we have two tribes, his son Judah and his son Levi. The Levites were to be the priests and through the Torah the priests were really really important. But we're seeing them fade now and the tribe of Judah was supposed to be the kings. Well where does Benjamin come into? Here's the thing. At the end of Judges, if you remember, something really terrible happened involving the tribe of Benjamin and Benjamin is entirely wiped out almost entirely wiped out. They, were, they, were, they, they lost a lot of guys. It was through a moral failing. And if you also remember, Benjamin, the son of Israel, was Israel's favorite son. What, it, what God is telling us through the selection of Saul, who looks like a king, He's physically handsome. He's got a good military mind. He, uh, he, he looks the part. So our human nature would say, this is going to be a good king. And the problem is Saul has many deep character flaws. He's going to have his own moral failings and spiritual failings. And God is saying, this is what the world sees as a king, but I'm going to show you something different. So Samuel anoints Saul to be king. And the, for chapters 11 and 12, things go pretty good. Uh, but he has a significant spiritual failure. And it's during a battle with the Philistines that Saul gets afraid. He's not relying on God. And he thinks he can use God in the same way that all the other enemies of Israel use their gods as a transaction. I do this for you, you do this for me. So Saul decides to make a sacrifice to his God in order to get him to do what he wants him to do. Samuel is the one that was supposed to make the sacrifice. But Saul takes it upon himself to do it. And we're going to pick up in chapter 13, uh, verses, starting at verse 11. And this is what Samuel said. What have you done? Saul answered, when I saw the troops were deserting me and you didn't come within the appointed days and the Philistines were gathering at Michmash, I thought the Philistines will now descend on me at Gilgal and I haven't sought the Lord's favor. So I forced myself to offer the burnt offering. Samuel said to Saul, you have been foolish. 
you have not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. It was at this time that the Lord would have permanently established your reign over Israel, but now your reign will not endure. The Lord has found a man after his own heart. Let me repeat that. The Lord has found a man after his own heart. And the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people because you have not done what the Lord commanded. Then Samuel went from Gilgal to Geba in Benjamin. Saul registered the troops who were with him, about 600 men. Okay. This is when Saul loses his kingship. He's still king. He's going to be king for a while until his death. But Samuel has said, because of your character flaws and your spiritual flaws, and that you didn't trust God, you wanted to do things on your own. Remember the nature of sin, what we've talked about, what the nature of sin is. It's telling God, I'm going to do it my way. I don't trust you. By treating God as a transaction, I'm going to do this for you so you'll do this for me. See, all of this leads to Saul losing his kingship. He may look the part, but his character is not the part. And let me tell you folks, when it comes to leadership, especially when it comes to leadership of a, a political nature, of a spiritual nature, character always matters. A person's spiritual life always matters. From here, we're going to go to chapter 15. And I want to read chapter 15, starting at verse 10. Because this says an awful lot about how God feels about Saul. Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king, for he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. So God can show regret. He knew that Saul was going to abandon him. He knew that Saul was going to turn out this way. But he needed to show that it's not man who makes the decisions. It's God who makes the decisions. And so he's saying, I regret that I made Saul king because I want to have person after my heart to be king. So Samuel became angry and cried out to the Lord all night. And early in the morning, Samuel got up to confront Saul, but it was reported to Samuel, Saul went up to Carmel where he set up a monument to himself. Then he turned around and went down to Gilgal. When Saul, Samuel came to him, Saul said, may the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Samuel replied, Then what is the sound of sheep and goats and cattle I hear? Saul answered, The troops brought them from the Amalekites to, and spared the best sheep, goats, and cattle in order for the sacrifice to the Lord your God, but the rest we destroyed. Okay, what's the context here? God told Saul to destroy everything. Everything. Burn everything from the Amalekites. And what is Saul's answer when he's asked, what have you done? The troops brought the sheep, the best sheep, goats, cattle in order to offer sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we destroyed the rest. I did what you said, except I didn't. Stop, exclaimed Samuel. Let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, he replied. Samuel continued, although you once considered yourself unimportant, haven't you become the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel and then sent you on a mission and said, Go and completely destroy the sinful Amalekites. Fight against them until you have annihilated them. So why didn't you obey the Lord? Why didn't you rush why didn't you rush on the plunder and do what was the, why did you rush on the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? But I did obey. He didn't. Saul has deep character flaws. He has 
lost his ability to be king over Israel. And God is going to choose David. And this is where we come into chapter 16. So let's review our line again. Abraham, Seth, no, sorry, Adam, Seth, Noah, Shem, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who is Israel, Judah, and out of the tribe of Judah, David. Chapter 16, we start with the story of David. And uh, David is a shepherd. He's a kid. He's the youngest of eight boys. He's not the, the firstborn son. He's the youngest. He's a musician and a poet. And he is a man, he is a boy at this point, who loves God, who loves Yahweh. And that's what God is looking for. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for a man who will put God, Yahweh, first. And we get to chapter 17, which is this famous story of David and Goliath. And this is where we see David's passion for God just spill out. And let me first read chapter 16, verses 3 through 11. Samuel asked, I'm sorry, yeah, chapter, uh, verse 3. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Jesse is David's father. And I will let you know what you are to do. You are to, and this is God talking to Samuel. You are to anoint for me one I indicate to you. Samuel did what the Lord directed and went to Bethlehem. When the elders of the town met him, they trembled and asked, Do you come in peace? In peace, he replied, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to me with sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, Certainly, this is the Lord's anointed. Eliab was the oldest brother, the oldest son of Jesse. Certainly, the Lord's anointed one is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his stature. Yeah, you made that mistake with Saul, because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. And what happens is, they go through each of the sons until finally David. And David sees and God sees David's heart. And you see David's heart in this battle against Goliath. And in chapter 17, we have that. And we're going to start at verse 26. And in verse 26 we hear David who has just shown up to the battle and the Israelites are cowarding in fear because there's this huge guy, this huge warrior named Goliath who is just taunting them. And he's taunting their God too. Because remember, it, when, when armies went to battle back in ancient times, it wasn't just these guys against these guys. It was these guys and their God against these guys and their God. So Goliath is out taunting Yahweh. Your God isn't as big as my God. My God can, you know, sort of like my dad can beat up your dad. My God can defeat your God. Starting at verse 26, David spoke to the men who were standing with him. What will, be, what will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised? Now, this seems kind of an insult. And it was. It was a total insult. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine, this, this barbarian, that he should defy the armies of the living God? He should defy the armies of the living God. The troops told him about the offer 
including this is what will be done who will kill, for the man who kills him. Uh, meaning that David would receive high rank. He'll be able to marry Saul's daughter. Saul is still king, but he's cowarding. He's not going out to fight. Saul should be the one going out there and fighting, but he's not doing it. Okay, let's skip down to verse 31. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so he had David brought to him. David said to Saul, don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servants will go and fight this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul replied, you can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth. And he's been a warrior since he was young. Okay. David answered Saul, your servant has been tending his father's sheep whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock. I went and I struck it down and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur, strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. So for David, this wasn't just a battle of armies. It was this guy is saying that his God is bigger than Yahweh, the creator of the universe. And that just can't stand. That cannot stand. All right, let's skip down to verse 44. Come here, the Philistine called David. So David's out there in front. He tried to put on Saul's armor. It didn't work. It didn't work. So say David just went out there with a sling and some stones. And the Philistine sees this little kid coming up against him. Come here, the Philistine called to David, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts. David said to the Philistine, you have come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the ranks of Israel. You have defied him. Today, the Lord will hand you over to me. Today, I'll strike you down, remove your head, and give the corpses of the Philistine camp to the birds of the sky and the wild creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that Israel has a God and the whole assembly will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, he will hand you over to us. And that's what happened. Famous story. Sling, stone, forehead. Why? Because David put his trust, his faith, and his hope in Yahweh. He let that be the battle. Where do we go from there? That's for next week. Until then, this is Chaplain Greg with the Wandering Wesleyan. Please like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you next week. God bless.